welcome to another video. My name is Will and in this particular video what I want to do is to break down a little bit of something quite interesting. So in my previous video I went through the DirectX 11 based um, UWP application whereby you can write um, DirectX code um, powered by, C, well should I say written in C++ and you can write your UWP apps from the ground up which is great if you have if you want to create an application that supports functionality for 3D gaming or just maybe 3D UI or just hardware accelerated graphics. So in this particular video it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be looking at WPF and its answer to 3D rendering. So uh, without much further ado, I'm going to hop straight onto this little demonstration. Um, and as you can see, I have a cone. And it's a very simple sort of demo right now. But as I kind of move this, this ellipse around the cone, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the surface area of the, of the cone is affected. It's shadowing. And if I hold down the right mouse button and I start scrolling, I actually move the cone about the I think it's about yeah about the going down vertically Let me, let's put it like that and if I actually just make that straight again hold down the left button and I do the same thing with the mouse wheel I move about a horizontal plane and as you can see there's um, shading applied to the mesh so it's kind of fun, it's kind of interesting. This is not like, um, the actual render of the cone is not fully done. So if I were to go like this, you'll see that the, the bottom of the cone is not fully rendered, but that can all be done. Um, this is just a simple demonstration. I wonder if the other side is showing. Let me have a look. Yeah, it is actually. So all but the bottom part. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through a little bit of what's going on. Let me just close the window, if I can just get this out. Excellent. So let's go through a little bit of information about what's going on. So I'll quickly just make this, use this opportunity to, to just um, explain. This demo is part of an... <clears throat> Excuse me, this demo is part of an application that I'm, I'm writing. So as the graphics rendering is a component of the media 3D namespace, so this is the WPF system.windows.media.media 3D namespace, um, the graphics rendering does not inherently benefit from the support of native DirectX APIs directly. However, a subset of Direct3D is utilized to manage 3D. And I'm going to leave links in the description if you want to do a little bit more research into this topic. And so, ultimately, the graphics rendering is not suited to a pipeline that is modeled for rendering 3D for intensive gaming in this particular use case, the use case of, the use case of um, Morph CE. However, the needs of Morph CE, requiring stable animation functionalities and all but lightweight 3D rendering, mainly to represent spatial position of 3D lights, shadows, and 2.5D canvas surface orientations, utilizing this technology is not only faster as an implementation than, say, a DX11 power framework, but also considerably simple if you already are used to writing in XAML, programming events, and if you have a general understanding of the components and the standard graphics rendering pipeline. <coughs> Excuse me. With all that said, I'm going to switch screens. Um, let me just see which one I can grab. If I can just move this out of the way. No, not that one. So, just getting still used to OBS. I keep saying that. <laughs> oh, I think I remember. Okay, cool. Excellent. So, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to dive into the XAML. Let me see if I can... Okay, here we go. It's just a little bit laggy. It should settle. Okay, so, the way I structured um, the workflow is that I'm relying on XAML um, for this particular build in terms of laying down the foundation of my mesh object and my viewport, which is the main component of the 3D rendering. Uh, uh, you will see, if you observe here, that I'm utilizing a viewport 3D, and the namespace comes under from the system windows controls the viewport 3D namespace, which is included in, in WPF. It's off the bat. It's there already. <laughs> and in, within it, 
there are a few components that you need to set up in order to make this kind of demonstration work for yourselves. So we have a viewport 3D dot camera. We have perspectives for the camera. So all these things you kind of um, you expect from any sort of 3D rendering pipeline. Um, you have your camera. You have stuff, different properties such as field of view positions, so on and so forth. And you also have what you call what you can consider adding your models. So this is your 3D models into the viewport. And here I've defined a collection um, of viewport 3D dot children. And within it, I've got a model 3 a model visual 3D. And this model 3D vi um, model visual 3D actually spans for quite a while, um, defining different components of this particular model because there's so many things you have to define in the back end. And you only really appreciate how much there is to do boilerplate kind of stuff when you kind of delve into the realms of C++ for those who are not really, or should I say, for those who are more used to C Sharp, um, like myself. So it's quite interesting to see. Anyway, so we have here a Rotate Transform 3D. And this is particularly, this particularly takes care of the rotation of the model. I also have, I think it's an axis angle. Yeah, so the axis and the angle work together. So when you modify the axis, that basically defines on what plane you're rotating either on the horizontal plane or vertical plane, of, and also a depth plane, because I have a Z axis um, component to this property. So it's defined by a vector 3D um, class. And the angle is just the, um, should I say the magnitude of not really the right word to use, but you know what I mean. So basically, how much of the angle you are uh, either incrementing or decrementing by. And uh, what do we have here? If we keep looking down, that's the transform model group. So here is where we apply um, lighting and diffuse materials. So I'll also I'll leave in the link the res the source material, the documentation. You can add materials, you can add lighting, you can add different kinds of light, such as ambient light, directional light, you can affect the color. There's actually a lot that this API can do, which is quite impressive. And this is where you actually define the mesh in XAML. So if we have a look here, um, there's some position properties and normal, prop and pro normal properties, which you have to define. It spans for quite a while, um, considering it's XAML. Maybe there's a better way to do this. Um, maybe like some kind of... Um, collection can be defined and then referenced and just applied just to save all of this kind of this latitude of writing but this is unfortunately the case <laughs> and it's not bad to kind of approach it this way for your first time just so you can kind of observe what's going on quite visually and so that's that we have diffuse material brush i've got the color the solid color of the actual cone itself its opacity is set to full opacity and that's about it for the viewport. It comes down here. So I'm going to close the demonstration. Let me see if OBS updates. Okay, that's fine. So it should just close the debug view. And we're going to hop straight into the C Sharp to have a look at the business logic. And um, yeah, we're going to have a look at how this thing is interacting with the mouse inputs in order to, to do things like rotation and change the lighting and stuff like that. So I'm going to hop back to Visual Studio. It's just taking a little while. Excellent. So I actually just threw me out. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio. You can't see on your end because you're looking through the OBS view. Anyway, so this is the designer as well. So as you can see, the designer, the precompiler actually makes sure that the designer renders like this kind of view of what you've done on the screen which is really handy actually you you have a visual um you have a visualization of what's actually going on so it's quite handy in that sense to script with xaml and kind of make it in line with your c sharp code you're really utilizing one strength of wpf when you do that okay oops so I'm going to start from the top and kind of work my way down and explain what's going on. So everything is not written, should I say, documentation-wise, 100%. In fact, I should have put a comment up there. But um, hopefully you get the understanding, what's the general understanding as I explain things as well. <laughs> okay, so 
What I did here is I defined the axis angle rotation 3D, which correlates with the axis angle rotation 3D of the um, of the cone, which you may have seen in the XAML. And I've done that for both the rotation X and the rotation Y values. Them as global so they can be accessed anywhere in the in the um, in the program. I also have a rotate transform 3D. So again, this is applied to the mesh, or re it ref refers to the mesh, the mesh's value for the rotation. And I've also got directional light applied. And I'm not doing too much in the constructor of the main, of the main window. And I have some public properties to expose some of the private fields. So the main things we're going to be interested in this context is the uh, mouse move event for the viewport. And this is what kind of controls the lighting when you move the ellipse around the, the mesh. Now it's interesting because when I defined this particular event, the viewport was only sticking to the kind of dimensions of the cone rather than the actual square, which is I set to the dimensions of the viewport to be 720 by 1080. Um, and I didn't understand why. So I was thinking of maybe having some kind of relative, I don't know, relative viewport that is actually just absolutely the screen dimensions and then just kind of implementing that against the actual viewport mesh. I don't know, I might do that, seeing if, if, that's, if that's a better solution. It definitely seems more flexible than what's going on right now. Um, and yeah, what's going on here is I'm taking the mouse event args E and I'm passing that to this uh, method. So if I can just right click that and I'm going to go to definition. And let me just expose what's in here. So what this um, method does, it takes the diffuse light point 3D, yeah, which is a 3D point used to track the diffuse light, which I defined already at the top, and I just instantiate it, and I give it the coordinate values, or should I say the mouse position values, but I also set a little offset of 90, which was just done experimentationally to see if I can make the cursor um, I think I was either trying to lag it or make it closer to the arrow. I'm not too sure. Made the ellipse, the ellipse closer or further to the mouse. I think I was trying to make it further away or something to make like kind of lag. I don't really know what I was doing there. But you can add an offset. That will just affect the distance between the mouse and the actual ellipse itself. Now if we go down, mouse pointer coordinate. Look what that is. So it's a field, stores the x-axis value of the mouse pointer. So I think I have a public property, which I should be actually referring to. But nevertheless, um, this is assigned the value of the get position of the E argument of the mouse event args relative to the main viewport. So depending on where the mouse is against the mesh, then the shadow will be, or should I say the directional light will be affected. And yeah, the API takes care of the actual calculations of the lighting and its position and its kind of um, presentation against, like, on the viewport to what you see. So that's really cool. So nothing too low level there. It's, it's, it's abstracted away, which is really handy if you just need to make something within a faster time scale in terms of your application. Um, let's have a look what this is doing. No, nope, it's just an empty method, which I was just kind of like deprecated now. Anyway, let's have a look here. So this method is kind of a main one. This is for the mouse wheel rotation. So I've set a precondition that if the, so E dot delta is a property that is accessed, what, what it does, it represents the mouse wheel direction. So, or yeah, the direction rather. So positive 120, you're scrolling up, minus 120, you're scrolling down, zero, obviously you're static, you're, you're not doing anything. <laughs> And what's going on here is that I have an abstract method called bottom, bottom state pipeline, which I, you know, in retrospect, I think I should have named that a little bit better. Um, it's not really a pipeline as it as much as it is kind of just considering state, like the state of the mouse button. Maybe I'll change that in the future. So what this class is doing, the main functionality at the moment is that it has a method called set button state. And uh, what it does, it just updates these properties with the states of the um, mouse button left and right. So if I hold down the left button, then the program will know via a property that the left button, the left button has been pressed and vice versa. And should I say conversely, not conversely, but comparatively for the right button as well of the mouse. I think that brings us to the end of the main class. 
Um, and this just triggers, yeah, so this is the main viewport mouse right button. So it's just the event when you right button click on the viewport. And with the, let's see, what was that? Yeah, for the right and the left as well, which I've hidden there, but it's over there. And that is basically the functionality so far. If you have seen the original morph, um, you will see where like the kind of resemblance with this version and that version. But this is this was written very recently, and obviously I'm still writing up the documentation as you saw, which is gonna be something I want to do better with this reboot of morph. It's gonna have better documentation, so that it's just easy to keep track, and it's also very motivating as well. So that brings me to the end of the video. Um, let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the description. Uh, what you think. Did you know about this functionality? If so, uh, what are your thoughts on it? And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.